Hello, today I want to talk about the Holding Foreign Companies Accountable Act. This act was passed by the Senate in May and by the House in December. Now, I have previously spoken about why foreign companies want to be listed in the United States and about uh, the various requirements uh, given to them by the PCAOB and the SEC in order to list here in the U.S. Uh, this is largely an extension of the Sarbanes-Oxley Act uh, from 2002, but a number of companies, uh, especially companies in China, have yet to comply with this, despite it being uh, you know 18 years old. You can read more about you know, the benefits and requirements if you follow this link here in terms of being a foreign entity, foreign company wanting to list here in the US. Uh, for what it's worth, this act has unanimous uh, bipartisan support, which is kind of refreshing. Uh, given the day and age we're in, it passed unanimously in the Senate in May, as I said, uh, unanimously in the House here in December, has yet to be signed into law by a president. It remains to re be seen whether or not that'll be Trump or Biden, or if in fact the president won't pass it, but I find that highly unlikely that it won't ultimately be signed into law. Uh, now, the, the, big, the big issue here is that part of the requirements for being a foreign issuer here in the United States are is that the finan your financial statements need to be audited by a U.S. American auditing firm, uh, and Beijing does not allow this to happen for their company. So that's that's the big holdup here. Is that one requires it, one doesn't permit it. Um, now, specifically, what this act is saying is like is saying is like if you don't allow it after three years, you're being del delisted. You're out of here. Um, the, co the act also wants some information in terms of ownership. It wants to know the percent of shares owned by foreign com by foreign governments. It wants to know the extent of the financial interests or controlling financial interests of foreign governments. And it specifically targets the Chinese Communist Party. It wants to know information uh, about board members and, and whatnot over there. Now, you might ask, like, why is this important? Well, the, the problem is without these statements uh, being audited by reputable auditing companies, there is uh, possibility for fraud. And we saw that with Luck and Coffee earlier this year. I personally feel like uh, we are kind of not living up to the standards of the U.S. stock exchange if we don't require all companies to follow all the rules. So personally, I'm in favor of a rule like this. I want to see proper audited financial statements for, for companies uh, on the U.S. stock exchanges. Uh, now, I talk more about this whole problem with, with China and whatnot, if you follow a video here um, to talk about this. Uh, finally, I'm curious what you think. So I think this is a pretty good idea, again, because I want the US stock exchanges to live up to the reputation. We don't do this, uh, even though it seems to be targeting Chinese companies more so than others. It's mainly because it's mainly Chinese companies would have the issue here. There are some Belgium companies that also have issues here. But again, I think we need to have this prestigious stock market here. And if we don't do this, then it kind of undermines that, uh, that goal. Thanks so much for listening.